Okay, if you observe uh, the block diagram of an embedded system, uh, we have the major basic block diagram in this case, uh, the one of the important function a system core. Okay, it is the one which controls uh, the entire system, okay, entire uh, uh, devices. Along with that, you can uh, observe, I uh, support the system core. Uh, we have various other devices, okay, various other devices like uh, you require a memory, to store, uh, say you consider any application, application is nothing but again a part of a software. So that program has to be stored somewhere, right? So you require some memory, uh, maybe a RAM memory or ROM memory or secondary storage, whatever it is, right? And also uh, we require various uh, input output ports, right? Where to which uh, the sensors I have say input port as well as the output port, right? And other supporting circuits other supporting circuits, uh, uh, maybe some say for printing purpose or the network network if you require. So such components can also be used as well as a communication interface. Communication interface is connecting our embedded devices to some other device, maybe through the uh, RS-232 cable or maybe through USB, whatever it is, right? So coming to the core of a, now what do you mean by core? What does it include? of a system can be the FPGA, which you have used in our uh, SDL subject, right? Field programmable ga uh, gate arrays. It can be an application specific integrated circuits, ASICs, or it can be a DSP processor. It can be SOC, what we call it a system on chip. It is nothing but, uh, uh, or it can be a microprocessor or it can be a microcontroller. So this is nothing but the system core. So if we will we need to study each and every components in detail in this particular module in this particular chapter you'll be studying about what is what which are the different types of system core whereas uh, also you'll be studying which are the different input uh, sensors as well as the output actuators and you'll be studying of different types of memory and the various devices which can be interfaced to the controller so coming to the core of a system Embedded system basically falls under fall under this particular category. You can observe here four main categories are there under the core of the system, core of the embedded system. That includes general purpose as well as the domain specific processors, programmable logic devices, PLDs, application specific integrated circuits, or commercial of the shell components. We call it as COTS. Okay, so these are the four major components or four major uh, uh, categories what we have under a core of a system. Coming to the general purpose and the domain specific processors, you can observe here under domain specific pro uh, processors, we have or the general purpose, we have microprocessors, microcontrollers, digital signal processors. Okay, we'll go through uh, each topic one by one. Say so first one, if I consider the difference between what is general purpose processor and what is application or uh, uh, specific instruction set processor that is known as ASIC. What is the difference, basic difference between general purpose and then application specific? General purpose, you can consider your microprocessor, 8086 microprocessor, what you have studied. Okay, whereas application specific instruction sets, you can consider microcontroller, uh, say ARM controller, which you are studying right now. Right, general purpose is a processor designed for the general computational task. As we all know that it has a large volumes and targeting the general market. See, whenever I say a general purpose, it can be used for different types of applications, various applications it can be used. Say, consider your desktop system. Right now, you're using the Zoom app. In the same thing, in the same system, you are, or you can use a Word document. You can open a Word document, a Paint document or uh, you can run various simulators, right? In general, it is used for the general purpose, general use. A typical general purpose contains, what are the block con um, components in the general purpose? It is nothing but ALU, we have arithmetic logical unit and the control unit. That's all we have in the general purpose. The remaining all the other things, like uh, the interfacing units or the interrupts, whatever you require, or it may be the memory, it should be interfaced externally in case of general purpose. Whereas coming to specific instruction set processors, these processors are with the architecture and instruction set optimized to specific domain applications, specific domain or specific application requirements. Say for example, you can consider network processor processing or automotive or telecom or the media application. 
you consider all this it is it is nothing but an embedded system which is meant for a particular application i can't use a network card for some other application right you have a network card present in uh, in the desktops it is meant for the network applications i cannot use it for any other so such type of systems we call it as application specific integrated servers so you can just go through this this is the basic difference between general purpose as well as application specific instruction set processor coming to microprocessor uh, no much explanation is required i think you know what is microprocessor just imagine 8086 architecture in 8086 uh, architecture if you uh, uh, just imagine it consists of al unit as well as a control unit control unit and the working register right you have alu controlling unit uh, as well as uh, general purpose registers working registers like ax dx cx dx right which is within the system within the microprocessor microprocessor is a dependent unit why we call it as a dependent unit because in microprocessor we have only those units in order to make a system work it is only alu or the control unit or the working registers are not sufficient right i require some program so that program should be stored in some memory location from there we need to fetch it so in order to fetch it some hardware you require buses you require once you fetch it you need to place it in a microprocessor execute it and again send it to various input output ports or send it to the memory again there you require input output interfacing all those things so all this has to be interfaced externally so we call it as a dependent unit dependent unit microprocessor a dependent unit it requires a combination of other hardware like a memory timeo unit interrupt controller etc for proper functioning right whereas coming to microcontroller now it totally depends on the application which application you are using and based on that application you have to decide whether you want to use microprocessor or microcontroller if it is a mathematical computations or various uh, computations are included then basically we go for microprocessor microcontroller basically uh, some say controlled applications controlled applications like uh, turning something on turning something off or maintaining a temperature turning uh, uh, what do you call say that uh, opening a door automatically such type of or rotating a motor in a particular direction and such type of applications which is specific for a particular uh, uh, application you use microcontroller so if you imagine a microcontroller if you imagine the architecture of arm microcontroller which we have studied in module 1 uh, internal to the system itself you have various functions like you have a core of a system you have alu right you have inbuilt memory you have inbuilt dac you have inbuilt timeos you have inbuilt uh, interrupts everything is embedded together in a microcontroller so a single chip is used to control a particular application i don't need an external memory i don't need an external input output ports to be interfaced so microcontrollers it is why told here microcontroller is highly integrated chip which contains cpu scratch pad that is ram special and general purpose registers on chip rom uh, timeos interrupt and dedicated io ports microcontroller can be considered as super set of microprocessors so these are the various or you can go through different types of microcontrollers available um, and as i told you it contains all the necessary functional blocks for the working independent working so we can consider microcontroller as totally as an independent device right okay and compared to the cost also microcontrollers are cheaper than microprocessor so that's what i told you it totally depends on which type of application you are going to use based on the application you need to decide whether you are going to select microprocessor or the microcontroller because again there are limitation when i say a uh, uh, arm controller it has its own limitation like the memory it is fixed i cannot change the size of the memory so within that memory if it possible is if it is possible to uh, run your application then well and good if not I have to think of some other microcontroller with higher memory, or maybe I may have to use microprocessor and interface some external memory. So such cases. Okay, so this is the basic difference between microprocessor, microcontroller. Already I have explained you. Uh, you can go through this difference, microprocessor and microcontroller uh, later. I have shared the PPT. Just go through it once later. Okay. Next, coming to one of the important uh, part in the core of a system, that is DSP. digital signal processors okay 
you have microprocessor now, we have certain microcontroller and also DSP digital signal processors can also be used, okay, in the embedded system. So when it is, when, when it is required, already, you know that power, it is a powerful special purpose, 8-bit, 16-bit bit processor designed specifically to meet the computational demands and power constraints of today's embedded world, okay. Digital processors are two to three times faster than the general purpose microprocessor. It is compared to your microprocessor, it is faster. Why it is faster? It is basically this algorithm, whatever we design, whatever algorithm you have designed in DSP, it is implemented in hardware, right? We have a separate board for that. It is implemented in hardware, which speeds up the execution. Whereas if you consider microprocessor or microcontroller, it is nothing but it is implemented as algorithm implemented in the firmware. So basically what happens because of this difference, uh, the execution speed of the DSP processors are faster in case of, uh, are faster in case of DSP than the microprocessors. So basically when you require to process the uh, signals, uh, such type of the audio signals or the image you want to process, where a lot of computations are required, right? Consider any image processing algorithm or consider audio processing algorithm or the video processing algorithm, you require a lot of mathematical computations. In such type of computations, we go for the